The biggest bet the Falcons are making in 2024 is that Drake London is a top five wide receiver. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and your team every day. And guys, if you don't know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman. I've been covering the Falcons for far too long, formerly at FileFans.com. People also call me Sirius Black. Some people call me Mr. Drew. Some people call me, you know, the iron that sharpens the iron. Some people call me the Jolly Green Giant. But, you know, most people know me as Mr. A.K.A. And I appreciate each and every one of you that is an everydayer of the podcast that, you know, whether you skip the AKAs or you complain about them in the YouTube comments, like a certain pimp uh, out there, or, you know, you enjoy the AKAs. I appreciate each and every one of you that makes this podcast your first watch or your first listen of the day. Uh, and all you got to do to become an everyday subscriber, follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So thought today's episode would be a schedule breakdown, but the NFL decided to push that back a week. Uh, and so we'll do a mailbag instead and we'll get into some listener questions about, you know, some potential free agent signings that the Falcons could make, uh, whether or not Zach Harrison could solve the team's concerns at the edge position. And is there a chance that Michael Penix could overtake Kirk Cousins as the team starter next year rather than waiting until 2026? But we'll start off talking about the bets that the Falcons are making in 2024, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And this comes from a question from one of our Locked On Falcons insiders. All of these questions come from the Locked On Falcons insiders who get priority in mailbags. And if you want to become a Locked On Falcons insider, all you got to do is join the link in the description below. You'll get a 14-day free trial and then $4.99 a month. Well, with your time to get priority on these uh, mailbags. But our first question comes from Jeremy T. He asks, do you think coaching is better or scheme that would make us better besides quarterback, or is that more just an educated guess? So, Jeremy, I think the question you're asking is whether or not I think scheme can enhance the roster given we've had the conversation in recent days and weeks about the Falcons haven't really done a whole lot to upgrade the roster from a year ago outside of the quarterback position and, and D tackle depth. Um, and, you know, I've talked about how the Falcons are essentially making all of the same bets that they were making a year ago going into 2022 when we felt optimistic about their ability to win the division and make the playoffs then. Uh, basically it's the same bets with slightly, slightly different personnel, but you know, um, let's talk about the bets that they're making on offense, right? Let's go deeper into that. Um, and part of that is because I think a lot of this team's success this year is poised to be offensive driven, not necessarily defensive driven, but we'll see. Um, I think the two biggest bets you're making on offense are one, the run game is going to improve and two, the pass game is going to improve, uh, because of you're going to be more explosive through the air. Now, the run game is really hinging on two things, right? The first one is, you know, the Parker Hesse agenda. You added a blocking tight end in Charlie Warner uh, with, in, to play the role that Parker Hesse should have been playing the entirety of last year. As you guys heard me discuss many times last year, when I was pushing the, the Parker Hesse agenda, it, you know, when you play in a wide and outside zone run scheme like the Falcons do and, and will continue to do uh, under the new coaching staff, you need good perimeter blocking, and that relies on your tackles and your tight ends to do a good job sealing those edges. Um, the second thing with the run game is you're betting on that continuity up front, that by running it back with the same five starters that you had on the, on the offensive line after a down year, you're expected that those guys will have an uptick in production. You're expecting year two jumps from B. John Robinson as well as Matthew Bergeron. We've seen flashes of those guys, but we just need to see sort of that continued sustainable success Um as opposed to a couple of flashes here or there, we need to see that for, you know, you know, instead of two or three games like that, you need two or three months like that. If you get what I'm doing now, the passing game hinges on three things, right? The upgraded quarterback, the aforementioned upgraded quarterback, you know, we've talked before about how you're going to be hopefully better in generating explosive plays because Kirk cousins, while he isn't a guy that's known for pushing the ball down the field a ton, when he does, he's effective. Essentially, He's a bottom five quarterback when it comes to throwing deep balls in terms of the number of attempts he throws downfield, but he's basically a top five quarterback when it comes to actually hitting those throws. Um, and so when this Falcon team this year is going to dial up deep shots, they should be more effective at hitting them than they have been in recent years. The second thing that the pass game is hinging on is that upgrade and play calling, right, from Zach Robinson. 
And that is an unknown given that he's a first time play caller, but we remain hopeful. You know, the big knock I had on Arthur Smith, and it was a similar knock I had on Steve Sarkeesian and Derek Cutter, uh, was that when they, their ability to scheme up explosive plays was not very good. They weren't designing explosive plays. It was more a byproduct of having dudes, so to speak, you know, CP or Bijan or whoever breaking a tackle and, and getting a big gain. And you contrast that with guys that are much better at designing explosive plays, Kyle Shanahan being at the top, Sean McVay, Kevin O'Connell. And we're hoping that Zach Robinson on that spectrum is much more on the side of those goo gurus that come from that Shanahan McVay tree than the Smith Sarks and cutters that weren't directly from that tree, right? Arthur Smith was a byproduct of that tree coming from Matt LaFleur, but he never coached with Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay. Um, so that's the second thing. The third thing is you're hoping your upgraded, revamped, whatever you want to call it, wide receiver core is, is more effective at generating those explosive plays. Now, a lot of that may hinge on Darnell Mooney being that sort of X receiver, which in this offense under Sean McVay has traditionally been the deep threat. Um, the problem is that Darnell Mooney has not been particularly productive as a deep threat over his career. Like, you know, his catch rate on 20 plus yard throws, according to PFF, over his entire career is 26 percent. That's comparable to guys like Harry Douglas or Demir Bird. And you contrast that with another guy, Marvin Hall. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to get a Marvin Hall reference on Locked on Falcons in 2024. Well, guess what, guys? You are not an everydayer. But uh <laughs> Marvin Hall's catch rate on deep passes throughout his career was 54%. And typically the top deep threats in the league, you're hoping that number is going to be north of 40% in terms of how many of those deep passes they come down with. Ideally, the best in the league are getting 50 and sometimes even over 60% of those catches uh, coming down with those. So unless Robinson can really unlock a completely different skill set from a Darnold movie that we just haven't seen in the last four years, I'm not sure that he's going to really do this sort of vertical stretching ability. So instead, I think you're really betting on Drake London. Um, and when you look at the Rams offenses over the years under Sean McVay, you know, it's not because, you know, their explosiveness is not based off of having this great deep threat. Like they really haven't had that player since Brandon Cooks in 2019. Um, and they've had a revolving door at that X position. Guys like Josh Reynolds, Van Jefferson, OBJ, Tutu Atwell, Demarcus Robinson over the last four years. But yet the Rams in two of those years, 2021 and 2023, were still top 10 offenses in terms of explosive pass plays. And how did they pull that off? Well, primarily in 2021, it was Cooper Cup going off. And 2023, it was Puka Nukui going off that Cooper Cup led the NFL in explosive plays Um 20 plus yard plays uh, in 2021. And, and Puka Nuku was like top five or six uh, this past year. Uh, and it wasn't because those guys are, you know, getting a ton of deep targets, right? Relatively speaking, they don't aren't asked to go deep all that much, right? Um, but because of the sheer volume of targets that they're getting, you know, even though it's a lower percentage of their targets that are deep throws because they're getting like nine, 10, 11 targets a game, like, even if it, they're only getting like 10 or 11% of those targets being deep throws, it kind of adds up to basically a lesser player that is it more of a true deep threat that might be getting half of those targets, like five or six, but like 20 or 25% of those are deep threats, which is tr traditionally the sort of the break line for a guy that's a deep threat in the NFL, where it's like 20 plus percent of his pass of his targets are deep. So, you know, when you look at what Cup and, and Nakua did, they were generating plays down the field. They were also generating a lot of plays after the catch. But they also were really effective when they did take those deep shots. Like Coop Cup led the league in catch rate on deep passes with 67% in 2021. Puka Nakua was top six with 61%. And then you compare that to Drake London this past year, who was top 12 at 56% on those deep throws, right? We saw Drake London make a, a ton of those this year. And so I don't think this, the speed that the Falcons have added this offseason in guys like Darnell Mooney and Ronda Moore is really going to add that much verticality to the offense. Now, maybe it adds some horizontal speed that the Falcons are better able to utilize and get those guys going after the catch. But I do think unlocking Drake London's yak ability is going to be key because Cup and, and, and Nakua were very good in that arena. And Drake London to date has not been that great in it. And so all this to say, I think the real key for the Falcons offense to reach that next level of being a high-end offense is piggybacking on something that Derek Klassen our guest earlier this week on the pod said that he thought Drake London is a borderline top 10 receiver. And like, to me, he's got to produce like a borderline top 10, if not an outright top five wide receiver, like we saw cup do when he won the triple crown 
leading the league in yards, receptions, and touchdowns in 2021. And Puka Nakua had the most productive rookie season in NFL history with almost 1,500 yards receiving. And he was like top five, top six, I think, in yards this past year. So that's what you kind of need for this offense to really take it to the next level. If you can get comparable production from Drake London, then it doesn't matter that Darnell Mooney is basically, you know, the equivalent of a Van Jefferson or Tutu Outwell in this offense. Um, so you just kind of run your offense through that. And I think Drake has the ability, right? We know he has the ability down the field as that sort of jump ball winner. Um, again, you got to get more out of him after the catch, right? And if you can do that, I think that's all possible that I think can really unlock. And so really the Falcons offense is resting on this sort of three-headed monster with Drake London in the passing game, Kyle Pitts and, and B. John Robinson. And if you can get all pro or close to all pro production from all three, this offense is going to be good. My issue for me personally is just I'm not a huge fan of putting all your eggs in a single basket or in this case, three baskets because, you know, injuries and whatnot can happen. And but we won't get too deep in that. So in summary, if, if basically Drake London is Cooper Cup slash Puka Nakua, if Kyle Pitts is basically TJ Hawkinson, if Bijan is basically Todd Gurley, all those guys at their peak production, this offense is going to cook this year. And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see that this year, and hopefully that answers your question, Jeremy. But we will talk more about whether or not the Falcons are going to make more moves in order to upgrade this roster and sort of what spots are available with rookie minicamp looming. Are we going to see some sort of splash signing, particularly in the secondary? And we'll break that down as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. So most of my life, I've been living paycheck to paycheck and Thankfully, Locked On has been very good to me these past couple of years, so I can start saving a little bit more money, and I don't want to go back to living paycheck to paycheck. And Yahoo Finance, our proud sponsor today, is giving me all the tools I need to help grow my savings into so much more. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. And whether you're a seasoned investor or you're like me and you're just looking for that extra guidance to help get you started, Yahoo Finance is giving you all the tools and data that you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination to stay on top of the financial news cycle, including breaking news and analysis, editorials, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. That's number one financial destination is Yahoo Finance. That's yahoofinance.com. So passion, drive, and patience, it is the winning formula for winning championships, and it's also the formula that's going to keep your number one ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with 100 with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your number one ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So as we continue today's episode, I want to plug the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel for free here on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Of course, it's all free. You're getting, you know, top-notch opinions, analysis, and news on Locked On Sports Today. It's part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So our next question comes from Demetrius M. He asks, do you see us adding any more help at cornerback safety or on, on the edge before camp? Or do you think we will wait to see who gets cut and then get the scrap? So that is the big question. I don't have a, a good answer for you, Demetrius. We'll just guess. Um, the Falcons currently have five roster spots currently open on their 90-man roster. Um, I would expect them to fill those spots between now and camp. Whether or not they're going to fill those spots with guys that are notable remains to be seen, right? We've seen this happen in the last couple of years where the Falcons tend to come out of rookie minicamp. They make a, a couple of adjustments, pick up a few guys. You know, last year they picked up a bunch of guys from the UFL or the XFL, I guess, then it was UFL now, like LaCale London, Lucas Dennis, and, and Barry Wesley, who are still technically on the roster. Um, and so we'll see, right? Like I could see them easily filling those five spots with like four undrafted rookies and a tryout player or whatever. Now they did the one time they did kind of make a splash around this time was when they traded for Brian Edwards two years ago. That's probably the closest that they did to making a splash move after, um, you know, the, the, the draft. Um, 
So we could see that happen again. So it's not unheard of for the Falcons to do that, but I'm personally not expecting that. I'm just kind of expecting them to sign a bunch of guys that are more camp bodies. I know they signed an international player in Kenny O'Guinney um, today. They, they love their Nigerian pass rushers. Uh, so, um, but he doesn't count towards a 90 man roster. So he's just basically going to be a permanent practice squad player this year. And, and hopefully he'll develop, you know, the Falcons had an opportunity to do this many years ago with FA Obata. They never kept him around. He went on to, I think he's still in the league. Um, you know, this was back in like 2015, 2016. Um, and he turned into a, a pretty good player. So may, maybe, maybe we'll, lightning will start twice on that front, but, now, that brings us to our next question, which is let's imagine if the Falcons do make one of those splashes at cornerback, safety, or edge. Uh, and that gets us to our next question, which is from Richie B. He asks, uh, not that the Falcons are prioritizing signing any free agents at the moment, obviously. What position do you think we could get value with of the current free agents left on the market? Which ones would you be interested in? So I think probably safety is probably your best bet to get value. You have a lot of good Solid veteran starters like Justin Simmons, Quandre Diggs, Eddie Jackson, John Johnson, Micah Hyde, Adrian Amos. Several of those guys have you know connections to this front office and coaching staff like Jackson, Johnson, and Amos. Um, you know, I think you could sign any one of those guys to a modest one-year contract, and that would relegate both Richie Grant and Demarco Hellams, whoever wound up being the starter at that spot, to what I think is their more ideal role as a dime safety. And then you can just kind of figure it out next year. Uh, with a hopefully better draft class and possibly re-signing one of these veterans or maybe Richie Grant or DeMarco Hellams showed the growth that you would like to have them start. So that to me is what I would be in, most interested in. I think there are some corners that are interesting, guys like Xavier Howard, Stefan Gilmore, but those are more guys that you want to play in a man-heavy scheme and with the expectation that the Falcons are going to be heavily more reliant on their zone coverage. I think if you're going to sign a veteran corner, I think someone like Steven Nelson makes the most sense. You know, Nelson has always been um, a very reliable CB2 in the league. Uh, and, you know, while I think he's a good man coverage corner, I also think he's a very capable. He's he's not so like a lockdown man coverage guy where it's like, oh, why are we playing zone with Steven? Like that, that's the issue with Xavier Howard and Stefan Gilman. Like we're wasting their abilities even at their advanced ages asking them to play, you know, 70% zone or whatever the Falcons are going to do this year. I know another name that gets thrown out is Akello Witherspoon because he played with the Rams last year. You know, I think you can do a lot worse than Akello Witherspoon. He's probably a more proven option than anybody currently on the Falcons roster at that cornerback position, but he's been a little bit more up and down. He's had some injury history. You know, this past year was the first time he's ever played uh, an entire NFL season. So, you know, again, I, I think you can do a lot worse than Akello Witherspoon and, you know, beggars can't be choosers as I often say on this podcast, but, you know, I, I feel like, Nelson would be a better option than Witherspoon at this point in time. Uh, of course, you know, got to mention the Corey Davis and Hunter Renfro of it all. You know, if you want a, a better deep threat than Darnell Mooney, Corey Davis might be that option. If you want a better slot receiver than Rondell Moore, Hunter Renfro might be that option. But, you know, I, again, I, I don't think it's realistic. You know, we we left Corey Davis watch and Hunter Renfro watch it probably in 2020. Three, but we'll see. You know, I I still think there's probably a slim chance that maybe they could get Hunter Renfro, but we'll see. Um, two percent chance. Now, as for Edge, you know, Adam Schefter talked, um, reported today on when or Thursday, I'm sorry, that Brad Dupree just concluded a visit to the Chargers, uh, and has been quote unquote talking to the Steelers and Falcons. So would the Falcons, are the Falcons open to bringing back Bud Dupree? I'm sure they are, just like I'm sure they're open to bringing back Calais Campbell. But, you know, the fact that they went and drafted a whole bunch of D tackles makes me less inclined to think that they're going to bring back Calais Campbell. They only drafted one edge rusher. So I guess technically there's still a path for Bud Dupree to come back. And I, I wouldn't complain about the Falcons re-signing Bud Dupree. I'm not going to complain about the Falcons adding six and a half sacks to their roster at this point in time when they have like 29, currently 29 or 30 if you want to, you know, boost Grady's numbers uh, in order to, to make it look better. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd be open to signing Bud Dupree, but I just kind of think his him his and Braylon Trice's skill set are so similar. And so it's just like you're not I mean, you're adding something, but you're adding a more proven version of Braylon Trice, not necessarily a better version of Braylon Trice. So uh, we'll we'll see on that front. So those would be the veteran options that I would be more op most open to the Falcon signing. But you know, we're, we're talking about edge rushers. You know, maybe the Falcons have an internal option, and maybe that's Zach Harrison. And we'll also talk about the possibility that the Falcons could move on from Kirk Cousins next year as opposed to two years from now. And we'll get into all that as we wrap up today's Locked on Falcons. 
So this next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. And sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that out, especially as someone who is unbiased on your life. And I'm working through a bevy of emotions, you know, stemming from the Michael Penix pick. And, you know, is it is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it optimism? Is it hope? Is it joy? All of that, right? Uh, and you know, I get the ability to share those emotions with you. So, you know, I don't always have to go to therapy for that, but not everybody has a podcast and that's where therapy can definitely help you. Therapy is different for everyone. Most of us have bigger fish to fry than necessarily what our favorite sports team is doing in the draft or, you know, whether they're signing free agents in May or June, you know, and it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on, and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. So wrapping up today's Locked On Falcons, do you think, uh, our question comes from Eric B. Do you think the because of the lack of edges added thus far that Zach Harrison could be an edge in our base three, four, or do you think he adds weight to be a three tech? So it's not crazy to have Zach Harrison play edge rusher for you, right? You know, it, it's funny to me, like if the Falcons did do that and like there's a world where we're playing a base three, four defense and we have a, like a 275, 280 pound edge and Zach Harrison, like a 265, 270 pound guy and Braylon Trice. And it's just like, why are we playing a 3-4? What, shouldn't we just be a 4-3 at this point in time? Like, this is Ryan Nielsen's dream of having these big edges so that he can play lighter boxes. Um, so I, I think Zach Harrison can play edge in a pinch. Do I think that's the best way to utilize him in a 3-4 defense? No. I, I think his skill set is much more naturally as a 4-3 defensive end. Uh, but I think his skill set is much closer to a 3-4 D end than uh, a 3-4 o- outside linebacker. And I think he's best suited bulking up. That's I talked about that last year. I thought like he needed to be a guy getting in the NFL weight room, bulk up to 280, 285, something in that range, uh, and and just be a bully. Use his power and, and be a bully. Like go around, you know, flowery branch, and you know, he sees a kid licking an ice cream cone, just go knock it out of their hands, you know, shove Rondell Moore into his locker, just be a bully. That's what Zach Harrison needs to do. And I think that's the best use of his skill set. So um, you know, I think there is a world where you could ask him to play outside linebacker in the base defense and then kick him inside um, in passing situations this is basically what Zadarius Smith did for many years in his career playing in a three, four defense. Um, but tr- traditionally, Zadarius Smith played on teams that were stacked at edge rusher and were thinner at D tackle. And, and that usage made more sense. The Falcons don't really have that because they're kind of, I guess you could say, relatively speaking, stacked at D tackle and thin at edge rusher. Um, so I don't know if you could utilize Zach Harrison in that way. I know some of you are thinking like, why not Zach Harrison? Didn't the Rams use a 300 pounder and Michael Hoyt as an outside linebacker? Well, first of all, Michael Hoyt never, or he hasn't been 300 pounds for a long time, right? He wasn't 300 pounds when he came into the league. He was like 295. Uh, and he's been sub 280 for at least two years. Um, so he's probably closer to Zach Harrison's current size, uh, currently. Um, so like, I don't, Again, I, I feel like the Rams did that because they didn't have better options, not because like, oh, Michael Hoyt is this like, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 he's the ideal three, four outside linebacker. But then again, you can I'm sure Eric and, and many of you are arguing like, do the Falcons have better options than Zach Harrison at edge rusher right now? And maybe that's fair. So I think it's an option, but it wouldn't be my long term plan for Zach Harrison because I just don't think long term he's going to turn into anything other than just an average three, four outside linebacker. And I think the potential for him to be, you know, a really good player is more playing on the interior in that sort of five technique role um, as a defensive end. But we'll see what the Falcons plan is for that. Our last question comes from Justin S. He asked for the mailbag. How realistic do you think it is that the Falcons trade Kirk Cousins after 2024 if he plays OK and they have a decently good regular season, but a first round playoff exit and start Penix era in 2025? So. It's not very realistic, Justin, uh, because first of all, Kirk Cousins has a no trade clause. Uh, so he'd have to agree to be traded. Right. Um, and, you know, you never know. But like sitting here today, it seems very unlikely uh, that you can get the kind of three variables that you need the, the you know, the stars to align. Right. You need a team that wants Kirk Cousins. Right. You need the team to also have the cap space to absorb Kirk Cousins, 27 and a half million dollar uh, base salary, uh, which is possible next March, because there will probably be teams, a handful of teams that have like 
50, 60 million dollars in cap space, but you need one of those teams to also want Kirk Cousins. And then you're going to need Kurt to want to go to that team in, in order to waive his no trade clause. So it's unlikely, it's not impossible that the Falcons can trade him, but we'll just take the trade off the table just because it's very unlikely that all three of those things will align. So instead, could the Falcons move on from Kirk Cousins by basically cutting him? And technically, they could designate him next year as a post June 1 cut. They would save $0 against the cap. They would still have to carry a $40 million cap hit, which they're already slated to carry in 2025 for Kirk Cousins. He would have dead money of $40 million in 2025 if they made him a post June one cut. And then they would have to carry an additional $35 million in dead money in 2026. So clearly not an ideal scenario to basically play $75 million over the next two seasons for a guy who's not going to play any snaps for your football team. Now, I don't, because of all these reasons, I don't foresee a, a scenario where the Falcons dump Kirk, especially given what you said, Justin, where they make the playoffs this year, right? Even if he lays an egg and throws like three picks in that playoff game, I still think he's going to be their guy because there's every reason to think that the version of Kirk Cousins you get in 2024 is going to be the, the or I should say, the version you're going to get of Kirk Cousins in 2025 is a better version than the one you're going to get in 2024. Right. He'd be another year removed from an Achilles tear, which is an injury that traditionally people think takes, you know, a year and a half to two years to really recover from before you start looking like your old self. Um, He'd be more comfortable in, in Zach Robinson's scheme, assuming, you know, Zach Robinson's still around. And historically, Kirk has had some of his best seasons when he's had the rare opportunity. He hasn't had that many opportunities in terms of continuity of play caller um, when he's been in the second season of the same system. Right. It's only really happened like three times in his career. And I think. Those three years, 2016 in Washington, 2019 in Minnesota, and then 2024 before he got injured, 2023, I'm sorry, before he got injured this past year in Minnesota, are like the three out of the four most efficient seasons he's had in his NFL career. And I don't think it's a coincidence because he was a little bit more comfortable in the system. So it's hard for me to see a scenario where Michael Penix, without you know Kirk Cousins getting re-injured, where he's the week one starter in 2025, right? You know, now there is a scenario where Kirk struggles in 2025, doesn't live up to these expectations that he'll be better and the Falcons bench him or he gets hurt or whatever. And, you know, we're sitting midway through the season at a two and six record or something, because, you know, at that point, we probably have a first place schedule. And, you know, I don't know if this team is quite good enough. At, we'll see where they are a year from now. But like, you know, I imagine the difference between having a third place schedule and a first place schedule would, would be very meaningful as we sit here today. but. You know, there's a scenario where like the Falcons are struggling midway through the season, like two and six halfway through the season. And they're like, OK, well, let, you know, it's not working with Kirk. Let's turn the page to Michael Penix. So I can see Penix ending 2025 as a starter. I have a hard time seeing him beginning 2025 as a starter. Right. Unless this first season is a disaster. And I don't think any scenario where the Falcons make the playoffs is a disaster scenario for the Falcons. Right. You know, so that hopefully answers your question, Justin. So, you know, there's a chance. Like I, I won't say it's a, it's a non-zero chance uh, that they could move on. A, you know, they could trade Kirk Cousins next year, or cut Kirk Cousins next year, but it's not much higher than zero is, is, at this point in time. But we'll just sort of have to see. Again, a lot depends on how Kirk plays. If, if Kirk lays an egg and he's like the 24th best quarterback in the league this year, we're going to have a very different conversation, <laughs> you know, six to nine months from now, uh, as opposed to what I think most people are assuming, which is he'll be somewhere in that 12th, to what 18 range as far as, as passing efficiency so we'll see uh but hopefully that um uh, answers your question a lot of great questions thanks to, to all you guys that answered those questions uh of course the shout out to the lockdown falcons insider if you want to get priority on your questions hit that link in the description below also if you want to become a lockdown falcons insider you'll be able to get the rook aurora film breakdown uh as of this recording i haven't finished it yet but it should be available Friday afternoon. So if you want to join the Lockdown Falcons Insider, hit that link in the description below. It's a 14-day free trial, uh, and then $4.99 a month after that point. So you get film access, you get priority questions, you get to you know hit me up at 1.30 in the morning and be like, Aaron, what do you think about this Kenny Ogini Nigerian guy that we just signed? And you know, I am obligated to answer you. Uh, so <laughs> that, that is all the perks of uh, being you know, a Lockdown Falcons Insider. And I know a couple of insiders will actually do that today just as uh, just to mess with me and yes i appreciate you guys but uh that is it guys our next episode should be the michael Penix scouting report where i do my quote-unquote final analysis on michael Penix. uh now that i've finished the film 
or close to finishing the film. I should finish it in the next 24 hours. Uh, so that is in store for you Sunday night here on YouTube, Monday on your preferred podcast platform. Continue to make us your first listen. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.